this. My name is Katie Salitis, and I have authored five different book series so far. Um, the start was the Immortalis series. That is a four and a half book series. Um, that sprang into another series, the Old Town Pack series, which is a three book series on werewolves. Then from there, there's also another three book series on werewolves, the Little Werewolf series, which is more of the young adult, but all in the same world as the Immortalis and the Old Town Pack. And then I have my Chronicles of the Uprising, which is my dystopian with a paranormal twist. That's a six book series. And finally, my newest baby, my Agents of Asset series, which I just released the third book, Magic in Disguise. And um, I do plan on writing more in that series, but as of right now, I'm not sure which project I'm going to pick up next. I usually leave it up to my readers to let me know what they want to hear from me, and I try and write based on that. So. And this one's kind of weird. Um, indie, independent kind of lets you think that you're going to be solo by yourself and it's all self done. You don't have to have anybody around, but I found being an indie author, that's really contrary. You need your community. You need your tribe. You need other artists, not just other writers, but editors, cover artists. You need everybody around you. And the indie community has been the absolute best part of being an indie author. I absolutely love everybody that I've met. Spilling Ink, the show that I run, actually started as a, an indie collaboration. And so it's just been really fun exploring how actual community plays a big part in being an indie artist. You really do need that tribe around you. I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but I always like the don't judge a book by its cover kind of a, a thought process, especially when I write my characters in. I like to explore gray characters. I like to explore characters that you don't know if they're going to be good or bad or what role they're going to play. And as you read through a series, not just one book, you really see their true character come out. And somebody who may have seemed bad in one story may actually be good but people do things sometimes for the wrong reasons. So definitely pay attention to the characters and don't immediately judge them as good or bad when you're reading about them. Well, shoot, I'm still waiting on the success part. Um, you know, it's, it's a grind. You work every day. Um, you have to be passionate about it, otherwise you wouldn't enjoy the process. Writing is not easy at all. Um, putting out book after book and working towards getting readers to see it, getting reviewers to read it, it's a real grind and there is no, um, there's no easy way to do it. And if you're lucky, great. Otherwise, you really have to just every day be on your game. You have to write. You have to get out there and reach through social media. You have to try and reach the bloggers and the booktubers and anybody that could be an influencer and get your book into their hands. So it's it's a lot of hard work if you want to be successful. And the, the old adage is um, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. And I think that's absolutely true. Um, those people that you suddenly discover, if you look back into their histories, you'll see that they slogged through the muck and they worked their asses off to get where they were. And you caught the tail end of it and maybe one book or one movie or one song out of a hundred that they've worked on before was the one that really kind of sprung into success. So yeah, fortune and luck are great, but otherwise hard work, dedication. Oh man, please, I would love to be a star. <laughs> um, Self-doubt I deal with pretty much every day. Um, there's a lot of the imposter syndrome is the word we throw around a lot in the indie community where you're constantly feeling like you're not as good as your peers. You're not as good as other authors that are out there. And really the only way to combat it is just to keep working. Um, it's hard to write when you're down, when you're down in the dumps. There are days where I can't even force myself to write because I just don't have it in me. And it's okay to take a break and it's okay to let yourself feel what you're feeling because if you can't get over it if you don't let yourself feel it. So, you know, there are days where I just, I can't write and I try and focus on other things. Um, sometimes the story isn't working and I don't know why. And in order to get over that, sometimes it takes jumping around, picking up a different project, 
Um, like I said before, it's, it's a daily grind towards success. And if I just gave up every time I felt down in the dumps, I wouldn't have as many books as I have right now. And I haven't hit success yet. I'm still hoping for it. I'm still working towards it. Um, the fact that I absolutely love writing and I love telling stories is what keeps me going. And, you know, you do get over the down days. I'm the type of fan that can't even eke out a hello when I meet the person that I'm absolutely fawning over. I met John Barrowman one time at uh, a Comic-Con here in Vegas, and I am I absolutely adore that man. Um, I think he's awesome. And he's also a writer, which is really cool, on top of being a singer, on top of being a TV star. That man is just fabulous. But anyways, I met him once, and one of my friends had gotten us a photo op with him, and I was so nervous that I couldn't even eke out hello. I did the whole, you know, put my arm around him, take the picture, and um, couldn't say a word. Absolutely just starstruck, couldn't say a word. And I kicked myself to this day that I didn't say anything because I really wanted to. And then I know that if I had opened my mouth, words would have come tripping out and it would have been just bleh. So I'm a horrible fan because I can't even get myself to talk to somebody that I'm that starstruck with. And as as cool as that would be to have fans of my own that are that starstruck with me, um, I don't know if I would I would want that. I would want fans to just come have a chat with me and just kind of sit down and you know shoot the shit over books and and what they like and what they don't. In my personal reader group on Facebook, I talk a lot. To them about what they want to see in future books. I want to be interactive with them. I want to hear their thoughts. I want to tailor the stories, if I can, towards what they want me to put into them. I can't always give them everything they want, but if it makes sense for the story, it makes sense for the character, I'm absolutely going to try because ultimately I want my readers happy and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make them happy. And if I ever get to meet them in person, that's awesome and I will probably be just as as starstruck and dumbfounded as maybe they are or I hope they are I live on Facebook if you look me up by name Katie Salitis or Katie Salitis author you'll find my personal page or my fan page um, at my website katiesalitis.com you can link to all of my social media my Instagram my Twitter and also there's a link to my private Facebook group and if you request to be in the, the Facebook group, I will add you. And that is the best place to get in contact with me. Because like I said, I'm in there asking questions. I'm talking with everybody. Um, I'm there more than, than I am elsewhere. But uh, I'm on Twitter as Quixada Katie. I'm on Instagram, I believe, under my own name. So if you look up Katie Salitis, you should find me. And uh, But I do live on Facebook. And that's the best place to contact me and actually to interact with me. Thank you.